everyone. Welcome to Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast, where I share lesson ideas, songs, games, and inspiring things for your elementary music classroom. My name is David Rao, and I am the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. This episode of the podcast is a replay containing the audio version of a Musical Mondays live video. If you're not familiar with Musical Mondays, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I go live on Facebook and Instagram to share about the lessons that I'm using in class with my students. I give a recap of my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons and then do a deep dive about one grade level and share the books, instruments, songs, and process that I use to teach the lesson to kids. This podcast episode contains all the audio from the Musical Mondays video, but if you'd like to see a replay of the video itself, you can find a link to the archived video on YouTube when you click the link in the notes for this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Here's the show. Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Um, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. So tonight I'm excited because I'm going to be talking a little bit about concerts. Um, I don't always love thinking about concerts, but I want to talk a little bit about long-term planning as in like talking about like, what are we going to do next year? Um, So I hope this is less of a like me talking about what I've done and more of a like, hey, let's us two music teachers sit down and talk about like how you might plan for a concert and why you might plan like that. So that's coming up in just a second. Um, So if you're interested, have questions, things, please throw those in the chat along the way um, to talk a little bit about long-term concert planning. So before we get there, um, if you're curious about any of the links, comments, if I talk about, oh yeah, I did that video before, there's a whole page on my blog dedicated to the links and things I talk about in these videos. So you can check that out either by going to my blog and navigating to the videos page, or you can just, wherever you're watching, listening to this, there should be a link at the bottom of the caption where you can go straight to that page. So that's the first thing. Um, Second, if you're interested, there's a Facebook group called Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. It's a great place to continue the conversation, ask more questions, talk more with one another, share ideas and resources. Um, Come join us if you want. It's a great place to learn together. Okay, and one more thing. Um, I am going to be in Fayetteville, Arkansas this Saturday, April 15th. Um, to do a workshop with the Northwest Arkansas Travelers ORF chapter. Um, And we're going to be doing lots of stuff. It's called Sing, Play, Create. It's about um, improvisation and using instruments. And uh, we're going to talk about a family folk dance night, uh, how you might plan that and and, uh, put that together in songs. You might include all that. It's going to happen from 9 to 1 this Saturday in Fayetteville. So if you are in Arkansas, if you're in Southern Missouri, if you're in Eastern Oklahoma, um, and Tulsa, whatever you want to take a little drive and join us, please come. There's information about that on my, um, on my blog and also on my Facebook page. And you just click the link of the caption of this video on the links page and you can find information there too, or send me a message, whatever. But I'm going to be there this Saturday. I hope you'll, hope you'll come and join us. Okay. So talking about concerts, why talk about this now? Some of us are like, I just made it through my concert season. I don't want to talk about this again. But I find that the more that I think about things in advance, the better those concerts go, the more um, we I get out of them, the more that like, um, the the better I feel about them. And so I want to talk about what I might do next year, thinking about what I've done already this year. And like I said, if you have questions, comments, thoughts along the way, please drop those into the chat. Um, Because I don't want this to feel like, oh, David's talking about what he's done, but more like, hey, let's, as music teachers, talk about what our options are and how we can make um, concerts less stressful. Because let's be honest, even though for a lot of great, they have a lot of great things about them, kids love them, kids have fun, they're great memory makers, parents like them, you know, like all sorts of things, um, they can be a huge stress. And that is real life. So let's talk about ways to um, make them a little bit easier and uh, why you might start thinking about them now. Um, So before I do that, let me talk about my specific situation, the concerts that happened at my school, so you have a little context based, uh, a little context for this um, conversation. So at my school, this is my third year at this school, um, and before me there were a number of music teachers over about 10 years 
Um, and so there, there are a lot of things that like had been done, traditions, things, the way they did it. And so um, when I came into the job, they said there are a couple expectations or just things that have happened, just so you know. You can change it if you want, but like this is what we've done. So the expectation was every grade performs some sort of grade level performance except kindergarten, which I am all for. I think there's enough to do in the kindergarten year um, to just you know, get them used to being uh, students, let alone getting them to figure out their singing voice or uh, being confident or working together or dancing. or Like there's so much that happens in just kindergarten music. And then also like kindergarten, kindergarten, like they, they're still, you know, walking in a line, sitting crisscross, being able to not pee for 20 minutes. I mean, like there are so many things kindergartners do. So the added stress of adding a performance, I am not sad that, they, that I do not have the expectation to do a performance with that grade. It's a lot. Okay, but I do, I am expected to do first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade in a given calendar year. Um, and how I plan that out and do all of that is sort of up to me. But they did say when you when I came in, they were like, well, first grade, second grade has sort of been a mixed bag of whatever of the last couple of years. Um, third grade has historically done this thing called International Festival where all third graders in like their social studies and ELA and like all these sort of integrated ways um, study... Uh, places around the world they study different continents they study different countries and then as a focus for this like international festival they each student studies their own ancestry and then for this certain day um, they do a research project they do like a you know like a poster board example they do um, they can wear traditional clothes from the country if they want there's a big like food festival where they all bring in foods that are representative of different countries it's a really cool thing and, and like it's like I said it's very integrated in that like it's social studies and it's ELA so they write about it and they create things I mean like there's so much so many so many things that are integrated well historically the music teacher has based a concert around that day and usually does like music from around the world okay so that was one expectation they gave me and then the other one well two others actually the fifth grade they were like fifth grade always does like the winter music well not winter up until when i got there is like the christmas musical they always do the christmas musical okay so a december performance and then fourth grade has always done some sort of not always i i see like i was told like they've always done and then i talk to people and they're like no <laughs> Only last year they've done sort of a Veterans Day thing. So either on Veterans Day or around Veterans Day, they've done some sort of uh, performance that usually there's a way to honor veterans or has some connection to that or some community connection. Okay, so those were my expectations coming in. So I had feelings about that. Well, the first year I didn't do concerts because it was COVID year and they didn't have us do that. And then the second year they're like, yes, we're doing concerts, but sort of, but they're not public. And then halfway through the year, they're like, they are public, but you have to be masked. And then halfway through that, they were like, it's just public. It's open to anyone. <laughs> like all these changes. Um, so this was like my first year of really having like a normal year where like anybody could come to the show. It's this normal like regular thing that we do. Anyway, so it's a little bit more normalized this year. Um, so that's sort of my uh, context for this conversation. So this year, my fourth graders, the day after, day before Veterans Day, did a concert. Um, it was not strictly veterans. Um, uh, it was, we called it Every State is Great. I shared about that in the fall. Um, we did all sorts of songs that were about states, that referenced states, that were uh, from certain states, that were um, about different regions of the country. So we did all things that were like sort of state, United States related. And then as a part of that, we had um, a song that honored veterans saying like, from all the states, you know, people come together to band together to serve our country blah 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 and so there was a connection and there was a specific veteran song that honored certain that honored the different branches of the military um but not the whole concert wasn't all veterans because well not just all veterans but, but i think bef leading up to when i got there the, the whole concert was like patriotic music and veteran sort of related things i i can only do so many years where i teach like america the beautiful the, and, and like I can only do so many years of that I would go nuts if I did the same program every year, so I don't. Um, but also, like, there are patriotic songs. There are some that are sort of problematic um, because of the content or the content in later verses, things like that. Um, also, some of that music is really hard. for Even for fourth graders, it's very tricky. So I wanted to sort of alter that um, concert 
framework so that I could integrate more things that were more on grade level for kids that made more sense for them. Um, and so this last year, uh, we did something that like, like I said, every state is great. Um, and where it was more focused on the state. So that meant that I could do more like instrumental music. We could have more movement if we wanted. Um, there are, there are more ways to connect in sort of outside things if we wanted, as opposed to just like strictly patriotic, strictly what, you know, it's so like, um, my plan for next year, and like I said, all of these plans are like very, very like framework. I don't have anything set in stone. My plan for next year, though, is like some sort of concert that's like community helpers, community partners. Maybe it's occupations. Um, so maybe the whole framework could be kids like, oh, when I grow up, I want to be blah, blah, blah. Or when I, I love this job or whatever. And then so like in that, in the context of that concert, you could have any sorts of songs you wanted. You could have um, songs about different occupations. You could have, if you wanted to pull in folk songs, you could bring in songs that talk about certain jobs. Um, we could have a focus on Kansas and talk about jobs that, you know, like people had, uh, like um, settlers, or we could talk about all sorts of things that were like a connection to our specific area. But if when you make it more like generalized, like community partners, community helpers, there are just so many avenues you can take. So. In the meanwhile, this is my plan of like, okay, general like community partners, community help, like like occupations. I'm starting to like stockpile and think about all the songs, all of the activities, all the things that I could teach in a fourth grade year that are on grade level, that are on uh, within the pacing guide, things that I would normally do anyway. And how could I like theme them towards a job or an occupation or how, you know, like maybe there's like... Um, Maybe there's like a song from a, an ORF workshop or an ORF volume or something that I've done before with a cool arrangement or, you know, maybe something like that. Maybe I could add words to that that add it to the theme. Or maybe you could uh, tell a story that, that it is a part of that goes along with the theme. So right now I'm starting to brainstorm. And I like thinking about this now because now, like, as I'm teaching fourth grade or as I'm doing it, I start thinking like, okay, well, this could sub in for this lesson and it could be, because I hate having to take time away from normal um, curricula to teach something that's, you know, just for a concert. So generally I like to think about like, how can I teach that content that is on the grade level, but also can be reused for a concert. I talked all last week about how I took some of my first grade songs and sort of revamped them, retooled them to make them concert you know, showy more appropriate or whatever. So it's not just that shortened song. So that's sort of what I'm thinking about now for fourth grade. What songs can I take? What can I bring in? What can I pull in? What, how can I connect that all in? So that when I have that show, um, I have enough songs to work with. The other thing I like to do when I'm thinking about this long range planning is now I can start teaching some of it early. So like maybe there's a really tricky song um, that I could teach uh, now or think about how I'm going to teach that or maybe there's an easy song that I could teach in third grade that we could pull back out for that fourth grade performance. So maybe there's a song about a specific job or specific time or specific whatever that, that fits with that theme. Can I teach it now so that later they'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that from last year or at least with a little bit of just, hey, remember that song? You know, like we could pull back and reuse. So that's why I love things sort of further out. Um, but right now the general framework is community partners, community helpers. That way we could easily add in a song about military service, veterans, etc., And it could be a part of that conversation, but not the only thing. So it's not just to strictly patriotic, but it does honor Veterans Day. It does honor veterans, um, even if that's not the only thing that it does, the concert. So you could honor all sorts of community helpers, you know, uh, firefighters, police officers, postal workers, also, you know, all sorts of... Uh, people who serve our community, whether it's here or whether it's serve the nation. Okay, so that's like sort of my framework for fourth grade. Fifth grade, um, before I got there, I guess, um, I, t I, I try and like sift through the old programs and stuff. Um, there was a lot of like Christmas programs, like Christmas jukebox or Santa blah, blah, blah. And um, I sort of steer away from anything that is specifically Christmas because I know that Christmas is not the only tradition celebrated at my school. And so I try and make it more sort of generalized winter. Like this last year, I did a concert um, and the theme was spies. It was called Top Secret. And 
all the fifth graders were spies and they were looking for clues and they were trying to find somebody had left clues around the school. I talked about that in a video in the fall. I'll link that on the links page. But talking about that, it was all themed around spies and clues and uh, trying to discover things. And so all my songs basically could be themed around that. I could take lots of arrangements, things that I create or things that I got from like an ORF workshop or something and take it and theme it so that it fits that theme. What was the person or the clues that the person was leaving? They were leaving clues that we may have a snow day. So yes, it does fit that like winter theme, that winter idea, even though like not a lot of it, it's about the winter, but I, I wanted to have like some sort of connection um, to that. So this next year, um, I have this like wild idea that maybe it could be about um, like the news because my school has a really cool green screen. They have um, the kids do the news every week um, for like the school news. Um, could we do so that each song was like a different part of that news broadcast? Um, could we have like a cool flashy intro? You know, like maybe I could project up on a screen on part of the gym, like a cool flashy intro, like, you know, Prairie Ridge Elementary News, blah, blah, blah. You know, like live, live news channel six or whatever. Um, and but it would be have to be news channel five because it's fifth grade news channel five blah 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 and so like then we could have like some pre-recorded segments if we wanted with kids you know like in blazers or whatever like you know at a news desk um, and <clears throat> we could talk about oh breaking news and blah 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 and did you hear the news from the bus loop and blah blah you know like all sorts of things we could have actually pre-recorded segments where like kids are out there with like a microphone at like in front of a bus or you know like all sorts of sort of silly. Um, sort of silly fun things that we could include in that. <clears throat> um, so that's like sort of a fun idea of what you could do. And so then like we could have a song that's about the weather, a song about sports, a song about, you know, an international song from an international correspondent, all sorts of things. Um, <clears throat> and then a running joke through it could be, we keep pushing out the weather guy because there's other breaking news, but the weather person has important stuff to say. And th that could be like, there's a blizzard coming you know like that could be our connection to the winter theme is like the last song is about a snow day because that's the breaking news or whatever you know like that that could be really fun too but um i've already been talking with the librarian like can i borrow your green screen or like you know how talking with the tech teacher like how could we have kids pretending to do like live footage you know like what could we do how could that so that's sort of like where i'm thinking so then i'm trying to think of like okay well what songs how could i theme that into a newscast could I maybe somehow send an email <clears throat> to our local news station? Would they send like swag or, you know, like could they send like, uh, I don't know, like would they be willing to like take a 30 second video for my student? Like, I don't know. You know like there's so many things that you could think about. Um, just like when I was thinking about the community partners thing, like how could I like, you know, could we have pre-recorded like uh, parents in the audience who like in before each song are like I'm a nurse and blah 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 and I work at you know like could we do some of those things if I start thinking about it now and plan out sort of far in advance I can get some of that going but if I think too close to the concert <clears throat> it's almost too late okay um, my third grade uh, so they do international festival right I talked about that um, a few minutes ago and what we used to do was like songs from around the world and that was great what I've done the last couple years is an a folk dance night like a family folk dance night and I call it international folk dance night and my kids learn a bunch of songs um, and then they pull in parents and the parents dance all the dances with them on the night of the show it has been so much fun um, I love that theme I love that instead of producing like a, a concert sort of performance thing we have this interactive moment with parents um, it's a super fun crowd pleaser. It shows off a lot. So I'm looking for specifically now, like I have a set of songs that I really like that I have used in the last couple of years that have worked great. But there are two or three songs that I'm like, mm, what can we do instead? So I'm like, as through the year going, as I'm teaching, flipping through all the books, looking for what's another, you know, long way set dance we could do instead? Or what's another song where we could do a circle dance or could we sing or you know like how could we do that so um like how how could i how could i change that up for next year that's sort of my plan for um what to do next how can i change that so that's what i'm thinking about now as i go into that first grade and second grade is really up in the air because i can sort of do anything i want the last couple years second grade last year second grade was like an under the sea theme which was very easy to pull in all sorts of songs about, you know, 
swimming, fishing, ocean animals, all sorts of, you know, we could do stories from that. We could do an interactive instrument thing, like whatever we wanted. This last year, the second grade theme was food. Again, so many options for themes and things that we can do with that. Um, so second grade for next year, I have like a couple thoughts, but I'm still sort of still formulating and thinking and planning on second grade because that's where the point where I can start doing a little bit more um, and make it just a little bit more exciting for them, uh, sort of like more instrument work or more interactivity with families and parents. Um, so I'm started trying to think about like, what could I do? The ocean was great. Food was great. I like a theme that is sort of general, but still gives us a framework. Um, so I think next year we might do something like trip to the library or um, something book themed. Then we could have either one book that frames the whole concert. So that, like as we're going, you know, we could um, be a part of that. The whole thing could be like a fairy tale. Like we could say like once upon a time, you know, like go through and then add and create our own story, building that out with songs and poems and all sorts of things that we include. Um, I've also done a thing in the past where um, I had planned a concert and uh, I convinced the librarian to join me and it was all based around one book. And, um, you know, all the kids got up on stage and the librarian comes out and goes, welcome to International Read Aloud or welcome to the second grade read aloud night. I'm so glad. What a great turnout we have. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. No, this is the second grade concert. And she was like, oh, wait, this isn't book reading night. And I was like, no, no, it's the it's concert night. And she's like, oh, but like I brought my book. And so what we had was like the librarian read a page to the book. We added a song, read a page to the book. We added a song. And my librarian now is like, yes, I would love that. So um, I, I'm still trying to figure out how exactly I want to do that. But books, when the theme is like books, there's so many cool things you can do with that. The other fun thing is that like, you can send an email to parents and say like, here are the five books that we're using. If you want to get them and read them at home. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? And parents love being able to do stuff like that. Um, so that's another fun connection, um, but something maybe book related, it gives us so many avenues to go down um, and, and so much that we can do. And then first grade, again, the last couple of years has been pretty general. Um, two years ago was uh, Groovy Zoovy. So it was a zoo themed concert. This year was going to the farm. Um, again, animal themed. I feel like with first grade, if you can have something animal themed, it's very good, easy for parents to find costumes or clothing that sort of matches that theme. Um, it also means that like I can sort of run with a lot of different things, a lot of different areas within that theme and still be on theme. So what I'm maybe thinking of is uh, sort of like a jungle or a safari. Um, it'd be cool because then there's so many different animal songs that we could sing, maybe things that we already know. Uh, you could tie in themes like, you know, like Tarzan or uh, I don't know, any sort of story that you wanted that that connected to that sort of jungle theme. Um, but it, it because it's general enough, um, it could we don't know where the jungle is. Maybe it's a jungle in the zoo or it's a jungle in a different part of the world or whatever. Um, and just for fun, you know, if there's a song you really, really love and it's about a polar bear, you know, you could uh, add that in and be like, how in the world is there a polar bear in the jungle? What is happening? This is the wrong story. I mean, like there, there are, no matter what you want to do, you can tie it in with the theme if you're creative enough. Um, and so, but anyway, for right now, my theme, my theme is, I'm thinking like jungles, safari, something along those lines. Um, and if I can start planning on that now, I can start pulling those songs now and say, like, oh, well, we didn't do that one this year, but uh, because we did the, the farm one, but in place of that, teaching this concept, I could teach this other song instead, you know, so, cause again, it, if we plan out and think ahead, then as I'm thinking like, you know, fall content for first grade, instead of doing just random general songs. If I like have to teach quarter notes or if I have to teach so me or if I have to teach, you know, certain different concepts, I can start thinking, is there a song I can use that is jungle themed that would match this theme? Um, so that's sort of, again, why I like to think so far in advance. The final reason I like to think so far in advance is um, because then if I'm thinking all of that, planning all that out, I can be more thoughtful about costumes, about um, decorations about things that are related. So if I'm ever out and about and I, you know, going through the clearance section of a Target and I find there's a bunch of like, you know, maybe Target in the summer had a 
a luau theme and I know I'm going to do a beach concert, well, I can get all those decorations and things on clearance. Or I can say to parents, hey, next year our concert for blah, blah, blah grade is this thing. If you find anything along the way and you want to buy it and donate it, you know, like the, the earlier I can do that, the more, you know, you're on the lookout for that sort of stuff. Um, it means you're spending less money or you're being more strategic about how you do spend money. You can, you know, ch chat with parents and they can plan on like, oh, I got, you know, we're going to get a costume on sale after Halloween and it's going to be the whatever, to, you know, if they want to do that. But the more you have that plan in advance, the better you can make those coordinations early. Okay, well, I hope this was sort of helpful talking about how to plan sort of long range thinking about that. Like I said, I'm not, I haven't given you like, and these are the 18 songs we're going to do next year. Like, I don't know any of that yet. But knowing the framework and knowing the themes, knowing sort of how I would um, frame that out helps me think ahead. So that like, when I start thinking about next year, when I start thinking about all that, I've got the framework in mind so that it helps me plan my curriculum for the year. It helps me plan the content that I teach. It helps me plan, um, you know, what I share with parents, how I share, how I connect with them. Um, and, and it just really helps sort of me focus instead of like, oh, I just got to get through the end of this, you know, like I start already thinking about like, okay, well I can be, uh, instead of just like, well, I have a random day, what am I going to do? Oh, I can teach this other thing and that's sort of on theme or that sort of fits with what I'm planning on doing anyway. So having these sort of long range plans helps me focus that energy, but also focus my thoughts as I go into the end of this school year and into the next school year. On the links page, I'll try and link all of those conversations I had this year on previous videos about those other concerts things. So like if you want to go back and look at like the things I talked about that I did this year, you can find those. But as always, if you have questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'd love to come back um, and connect with those and um, check in on those. If you are around this Saturday, the Fayetteville, Arkansas area, I hope you'll come join us. Um, at Happy Hollow Elementary School this Saturday morning for a workshop with the Northwest Arkansas Travelers ORF chapter. It's going to be a super amazing time. We're going to talk about improvisation, family folk dance night, um, and a lot more. So it'll be super fun. If not, I hope I'll see you around and I'll see you next week for another Musical Mondays video. Thanks so much for spending the night with me. Bye everyone.